Welcome to another episode of IGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering the uh, syllabus section 2.1, Cell Structure and Organization. So the first thing you need to be able to do is uh, differentiate between an animal cell and a plant cell. Uh, you need to be able to identify and state the functions of each of the structures present in each cell. Um, and it might be easiest to think about it like this though. Plant cells have everything that an animal cell does except a few extras such as cell walls, uh, chloroplasts and vacuoles. So one thing you need to be aware of is that those circled structures here, these are for uh, those that are taking the core curriculum. The uncircled structures are those structures that you need to know for the extended curriculum only. So how we're going to do this today is I'm going to verbally explain uh, the functions of each of these structures here uh, in this very simple diagram that I've drawn up. So if you have a pen, uh, it might be best to take that out and uh, write as we go through this video. So starting with the nucleus. This is found in the cytoplasm and it's a circular structure that contains DNA in the form of chromosomes. It's basically the control center which controls cell division, cell development and cell activities. Cytoplasm is what we have here uh, represented, the, uh, represented by the blue color is a jelly-like substance which contains particles and organelles. Okay, organelles is just something that you call um, a structure that is present in a cell. So all of these things here, they're organelles. Um, so uh, the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance uh, which contains particles and organelles and it's contained by the cell membrane, which I will explain to you now. The cell membrane is a partially permeable layer which encloses the cytoplasm. Um, this is important because it controls what enters and what leaves the cell. Okay, so these three structures here, both plant cells and animal cells have them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to um, some structures that only plant cells have. Okay, so for example, the cell wall. Okay, this is a tough layer made of cellulose um, and it surrounds the outside of plant cells and uh, now this is important because it prevents cells from bursting when they take in water okay uh, secondly we've got the chloroplast uh, which is a uh, structure represented by green circles here these are uh, found in the cytoplasm and uh, they contain something called chlorophyll which is used to tra uh, trap light energy uh, for photosynthesis. And lastly, the vacuole is a fluid filled space which is surrounded by a membrane, okay, represented by this uh, black line here. And um, this is important because it helps uh, the cell keep its firm structure and uh, it contains salts and sugars as well as um, a form of storage. Okay. Now uh, the next couple of organelles are only for those that are taking the uh, extended syllabus and these structures you don't actually need to know their functions but you need to be aware of their existence and be able to identify them in a diagram. So First of all, um, I'm just going to go uh, start off with ribosomes. Now, ribosomes are for protein synthesis. Um, they're found in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which I'll explain to you soon. And um, they're also found freely in the cytoplasm, and they are represented as black dots. Okay, so if you have a diagram and you've got like small little black dots, then you can confidently confirm that it is indeed a, ri a ribosome. Uh, next up is the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of a cell. Now, um, this is for aerobic respiration. Okay, and aerobic respiration is uh, the chemical reaction which produces energy in a cell. Uh, so, if you consider a cell which has very high metabol metabolism rates, then you will find that it has a lot of mitochondria in it to provide it with sufficient energy for its needs. Um, the next up 
is um, endoplasmic reticulum, represented as ER in the diagram here. Now, as you can see, you've got two different types of endoplasmic reticulum. So you've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum and you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, what the rough endoplasmic reticulum is, is just both of these are just flattened discs. Okay. So it's more like flattened sacs, actually. Um, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum is a layer which surrounds the nucleus. Okay, so rough endoplasmic reticulum is a bunch of flattened sacs that circulate the nucleus. Um, and it also has little black dots which are um, which are attached onto it. Okay, so that's why it's called rough endoplasmic reticulum because uh, the surface is rough from these black dots. And now what did I say the black dots were again? Yep, ribosomes. Okay, so uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum um, is a bunch of flattened sacs located outside the nucleus and has ribosomes attached onto it, as so. Now smooth endoplasmic reticulum um, is found more towards the outside of the cell, um, a bit more towards uh, the outside, so towards the edges, um, away from the nucleus. Uh, they are a bit less extensive than the, uh, than the rough endoplasmic reticulum and um, one main feature of it is that they don't have any ribosomes attached on it. So just to give you a bit more diagrammatic representation of what an endoplasmic reticulum actually looks like, you can see here it's um, just a layer of flattened sacs. Um, here you've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum because uh, you can see that it has uh, ribosomes on it. And uh, here you've got the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or uh, here's another diagram, that has a much more smoother surface. Uh, thanks to the fact that it does not have any ribosomes on it, unlike uh, the rough ER. So uh, thank you for watching another episode of IGCSE Biology Revision. Uh, next episode we're going to be covering the uh, section 2.2 of the syllabus, uh, levels of organization, just the highlighted parts here. Um, the, the, the parts that are boxed around like this are it can easily be self-studied, so uh, we won't be covering it next session. Okay, thank you very much, and um, I'll see you next time.